So let's talk very quickly about ammonia. We have mentioned some of these in previous uh, chapters, but we'll talk about it. So, first of all, how do we manufacture ammonia? We manufacture it by a process called the Haber, the Haber process. And the Haber process was the reversible reaction between nitrogen and hydrogen to form ammonia. And we said before that the forward reaction is exothermic. Now, what are the conditions for this reaction? These are the conditions for this reaction. We do it at a pressure of 200 atm temperature 450 degrees celsius and the catalyst is finely divided iron so it's pieces of iron that are divided into very very small pieces now let us discuss these conditions we said we need what to have more ammonia high pressure or low pressure remember when we're talking about reversible reactions and we said if i want this reaction to go forward and give more ammonia that means I'm trying to make it give less number of molecules because if it goes forward, it forms two molecules. If it goes backward, it will form four. So I want it to go forward and form uh, less number of molecules. Then I should be using higher pressure. So that's why we're using a pressure of 200 and not anything less. The, another question would be, okay, since increasing pressure increases the yield of ammonia or gives me more ammonia, why not do it at a higher pressure, 250, 300, whatever? Remember that as we increase the pressure, the pro process becomes more and more expensive. So why is it not more than 200 atm? That would be expensive. Why isn't it lower than 200 atm in order to cause the reaction to go forward to give less number of molecules? So that's the pressure. What about the temperature? Now, the forward reaction is exothermic. That means as I add more and more ammonia, I am increasing the temperature or the reaction gives out more heat. And we said that means should I use high temperature or low temperature to go forward? If, it, if the forward is exo, I should actually decrease temperature to go forward. Lowering the temperature favors the exothermic reaction so that is why i'm using 450 and i'm not using a hundred or a thousand sorry i'm not using a thousand or anything higher so we use 450 it should not be higher why because if the reaction is done at a higher temperature then it will move to the left or move backward and give less yield of ammonia because backward is endothermic when we increase temperature it goes to the side that's endothermic. So we don't use anything higher than 450. Why don't we use lower than 450? Since we said lowering the temperature will favor forward reaction. So actually, I should be doing it at about 200 or 100. That would favor more and more forward, so give more and more ammonia. But remember that the temperature also affects the rate of a reaction. So if the temperature is too low, the reaction will be much slower. And we don't want the reaction to be too slow. Okay, so a temperature that is too high will cause the reaction to go backward, less yield of ammonia. A temperature that is too low would cause the reaction to be very slow, and that's not required. Okay, why are we adding a catalyst? We said a catalyst speeds up both forward and backward reaction, um, so it reaches equilibrium uh, uh, faster. Okay, so... The ammonia that is formed, I want to favor the forward reaction. As, I, as it forms ammonia, it is liquefied and removed from the reaction. And then any unreacted nitrogen and hydrogen are recycled again over the catalyst. Okay. Um, what are the raw materials for this reaction? Where do I get nitrogen from and where do I get hydrogen from? Well, we said before that nitrogen is obtained by fractional distillation of liquid air. So the raw material for nitrogen is air. Hydrogen, where do we obtain it from? We said we obtain it from the cracking of hydrocarbons that are obtained by fractional distillation of crude oil. So the raw material from which I get hydrogen is crude oil. Do you understand the meaning of raw material? The original substance from which this is obtained okay once we've made ammonia what are the properties of ammonia you should realize that ammonia is less dense than air so it is a lighter gas and it is very soluble in water so i cannot collect it over water remember it reacts with acid of course we said ammonia is a gas it will react with acid when it reacts with hydrogen chloride it gives white fumes of ammonium 
chloride and that is again a reversible reaction because when the ammonium chloride um, is heated it gives the ammonia and hydrogen chloride gas so we said ammonia is very soluble in water so i cannot collect it over water now do i collect it by upward delivery or downward delivery we said it is lighter than air so we collect it by upward delivery what do we use ammonia for mainly to make fertilizers and you should realize that fertilizers such as ammonium phosphate fertilizers are made from ammonia now in general you should realize that fertilize you know what are fertilizers right Fertilizers are substances added to the soil so that the plants grow faster. Fertilizers should include three main elements. It should include nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium in order to have faster growth and higher yield. Remember that nitrogen and phosphorus are non-metals. Potassium is a metallic ion. So these are the three things. N, P, K. Nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. This is what is needed in fertilizers. And another use of ammonia is that we use it to make nitric acid, which can then be used to make other products. Okay, this is a question. Fertilizers are used to increase the growth of plants. Fertilizers have to dissolve in water if they are to be used by plants. Plan an investigation or an experiment to find the solubility in gram per 100 centimeter cubed of fast grow fertilizer at a certain temperature, 30 degrees centigrade. So he has a fertilizer and he wants you to find out how much can dissolve in 100 centimeter cubed of water at 30 degrees centigrade. So what do we do? Okay, <clears throat> so what we do is we weigh the fertilizer, a certain amount of, a known amount of fertilizer at the beginning. So we weigh 100 grams, for example, of the fertilizer using balance, put into a beaker, add a certain amount which he wants, which is 100 centimeter cubed of water. He wants to know how much will dissolve in 100 centimeter cubed of water. And we put this using a measuring cylinder because it doesn't really need to be that accurate. Then we heat it to the temperature he requires, which is 30. Stir the solution until no more solid dissolves. Then we filter through filter paper and funnel. Dry the residue between filter paper. Weigh. In that case, you have the amount of residue, and that means the amount that did not dissolve. You already know how much you added at the beginning, so subtract from the original mass to determine the mass of fertilizer that did dissolve in 100 centimeter cubed of water easy okay so that's the end of it study this tiny little chapter and do the questions